This episode was pre-recorded prior to our recent engagement. Since then, Rory has asked me to be his wife and I have accepted without hesitation. I hope you guys enjoy this show and this fun, educational, and inspiring interview. Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to the Digest This podcast. This episode is actually a bit personal because I am interviewing my boyfriend, Rory Cameron. Why? Because he has quite a health journey story of his own that's super inspiring to me and I know it will be for you too. He shares about why he only has one kidney, his property being burned by a fire, and what he currently does now for his health and why it's so important to him. We also share how we actually met, which is kind of (laughs) cute. I could not stop giggling and smiling during this episode and uh, even got a little watery eyed. So prepare for some laughs and get ready to be inspired by my boyfriend's amazing story. But before you get all nice and cozy and start those dishes or start your driving commute, I'd love for you to pause this episode and give it a five-star rating and review. By doing this, you're helping get this podcast out into more ears and make it more easily found, resulting in more lives being changed. That is the best way you can support me is by simply taking 30 seconds from your day and giving this a quick rating and review in whatever podcast outlet you listen to. Thanks so much, guys, for all your continued support. It really means a lot. Quick pause because what would this podcast be without me sharing about the benefits of my very own digestive support plant-based protein powder by New Zest? If you don't know, I co-created the digestive support product by New Zest back in 2018, and it's been a top seller ever since. Why? Because I wanted to create an easy to digest protein powder without stevia or fake sweeteners without gums, and without flavorings, commonly found in other vegan protein powders. Not just found in protein powders, but also so-called gut support products. And these gums and additives can actually cause digestive upsets. With my protein powder, you'll find only clean, real, simple ingredients. And I chose to add a specific probiotic known to fight off candida and help the gut specifically. This probiotic is so strong, it does not need refrigeration. And since it doesn't need refrigeration, it can also survive your body's temperature, ensuring it survives once it gets down into your belly so it can start doing its job. You'll also find L-glutamine, which has been shown to help and heal seal the gut, heal and seal the gut. Now, this is super important because the gut lining, obviously you don't want things leaking out. You don't want things seeping in. So L-glutamine can help restore the gut lining, resulting in an overall healthy and happy core. And we all know health starts in the gut. My digestive support protein is glyphosate free and contains no gluten, grains, or lectins. It's vegan, paleo, and keto friendly, as well as suitable for those on a candida or diabetic diet. If you want to grab a tub and start your journey to a healthier and happier gut and ultimately happier life, go to newsest.usa slash digest for a discount. That's N-U-Z-E-S-T dot USA slash digest. This offer expires soon, so take advantage while you can. With every seasonal change from summer to fall to winter and spring, I always get allergies. On top of seasonal changes, outdoor flowers and grass and indoor dust and dander are always a battle. It got so bad one year, I actually caved and started taking an over-the-counter allergy medication that started giving me nightmares and terrors. And it made me just feel super weird. I don't know. It was just a weird experience. And after reading the back, I realized that was one of the side effects from this medication. And I started looking for alternatives. Back in 2020, 
I discovered Life Seasons Breathe X, which is a supplement containing a blend of natural ingredients that support sinuses and nasal passages, manages healthy tissue in the respiratory tract, and promotes normal immune function. They use plants and vitamins like quercetin, bromelain, citrus biflavonoids, and vitamin C that work together to help manage symptoms and help build the body's defenses. Breathe X usually helps with allergy symptoms and sinus discomfort within 30 minutes of taking it. 30 minutes, that's crazy. Many people even see greater results when taking this product over a longer period of time, specifically for three to four months. So if you or someone you know suffers from allergies and are looking for relief naturally, Life Seasons is offering my listeners a discount on their Breathe X and all their products. Just go to lifeseasons.com and enter code DIGEST at checkout. That's Life seasons.com and use code digest to receive a discount. I am here with my boyfriend, Rory. Hey everybody. (laughs) So we thought uh, today's episode would be a little fun and I have a bunch of questions I wanted to ask him and a lot of them came from you guys as listeners on Instagram and um, he has quite a story of his own. So I wanted to have him come on here and kind of share his story. So first of all, uh, I think the number one question is, how did we meet? Well, yeah, we met online. Do you want to share how, like what online? It was on Bumble. I was on Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't, I knew it wasn't going to happen without me trying and doing anything. And I thought that was a decent way of being able to see, well, at least what people wanted you to see, but so you knew you weren't wasting time. And uh, yeah, I think it worked out all right. I think it's going pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. You're the only person I met. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, actually, I think uh, I met you like a day after I joined. So it was pretty quick. Yeah. I knew you were the one pretty quick. Uh Not right then, but... Pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Are we spilling the beans here or what? <laughs> <laughs> so, did you know who I like, who I was, or like my Instagram before you met? Like, did you follow me? Nope. Never heard of you. Had no idea you were even out there. I'm a little offended. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was living on a mountain for like the past almost seven years. Yeah. So, let's talk about that. You were living on a mountain for seven years. Yeah. Moved up to Northern California, and I was living in San Diego, working on Camp Pendleton and around other places around San Diego County, doing construction, remodeling restaurants, and doing some other stuff. Uh, but yeah, I ended up moving up Northern California, getting a little parcel of land and developing it, working on a well and building some structures and growing some food and chickens. Growing some food and chickens. So was it safe to say you were living off grid? Yeah, there was. I was renting a spot nearby where my property was that was on grid. And uh, I was using the grid, utilizing the grid from that property while I was building out my spot. So off grid. So what what brought you back to... (laughs) Civilization? (laughs) Yeah. What brought you back over here? It was the fires. Well, my family's in Southern California, so I came back down here to be closer to them. But the fire, fires in Northern California for the past few years have been getting pretty bad, and they finally got me, burned me out of there. All the property everywhere, the entire mountain, yeah. And it was just, it was like months before we were allowed to go back and assess our situations, and yeah, there just wasn't a whole lot to go back to. So, And honestly, like, when, when Rory first told me this story, like, his, like, property burned, like how to hear that and like like imagine your house burning down you know or like your property burning like that's like you've built so much in that space you know and like when he when he told me that like not just like him t- like sharing that with me but like sharing it with me and him being like just so humble like i just have to tell you like super just grateful you know and just 
not bitter about it. It was definitely harder at the time. It was more, it was pretty traumatic right at the time. And then, yeah, it just took a little bit of time after that to kind of get over it. But yeah, it was tough at first. It was like psychologically pretty tough for a minute. But yeah, there's so many people out there, just refugees from these fires going through a lot. I didn't have it that bad coming down here. It's just nice to be able to enjoy the beach again and mm. kind of get away from all the ashes and dust. Can you share, I mean, do you feel comfortable sharing a little bit about how you were born and like brought into this world? Yeah. Yeah, when I was born, um, I was looked like a pretty healthy baby, but they, and one of the nurses found a hard like lump kind of when she was holding me and it turned out to be a tumor on my kidney. So they did whatever they needed to do to figure out all that out and, uh, and ended up sending me to another hospital for surgery, took the kidney out that had a tumor on it. So then I had one kidney and sent me back home uh, a couple of days later. So then I was finally home with my family. And, uh, and then I don't remember any of this, of course, but yeah, just rehashing the story that my mom has told me. Um, but yeah, I was like apparently crying in my crib a couple of days later and the stitches had come undone. So my mom had found me like that and God bless her. She's a strong woman. And, uh, she was able to put a wet towel around me to keep my insides together and rush me back to the hospital and they, flew me to wherever they needed to to get it all uh, put back together. But yeah, it was a pretty stressful ordeal when I was little for my parents. Amazing. And this is all within days of you being born. Yeah. And then probably everything was like pretty much normal until I was about seven years old. And then that scar tissue from that procedure um, on the inside of my tummy had rubbed on my intestines and created adhesions. And I just had like debilitating stomach pain, couldn't digest food. And didn't really know what it was and had to go back for another procedure where they removed a small section of my intestines. And, uh, and that was that. And then I, uh, I remember all that. And then it was just some procedures that went along with it. And then nothing, nothing since then. No medication, no residual, you know, health problems really. Wow. What, what a testimony, you know, to, yeah. Uh, to your life, but like just the the miracle that God can do, yeah, you know, without any kind of medication, and yeah. obviously you're a healthy human being yeah. today, strengthening my parents, yeah, giving them what they needed, uh, yeah, from wondering if I was going to make it to uh, being here today, totally fine with no residual complications. Mm. Yeah, God is good and made our bodies incredibly, yeah, dynamic and strong in so many ways. So you have one kidney now. Yep, and you've always basically had one kidney since you were born. Mm -hmm. um, now that kind of perks another question. So is, are you pretty health conscious then, obviously? Yeah, I've grown more and more health conscious. I wasn't always so aware of the things that I need to be. I used to drink soda and eat a bunch of sugary stuff, which I still like chocolate, but it's a little different. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate? Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> You're, if you don't like chocolate, if you start hanging around me, you're going to start to like it. <laughs> I'm going to be force feeding it to you. Yeah, we have healthy amounts of chocolate. <laughs> so, um, okay. So I would say that's probably one of the the things that I've, I've learned from you is that like, because you do have one kidney, that's always been like in the back of your mind. Like I got to make sure that I take care of my body because, mm -hmm. you know, um, just from knowing like, okay, I don't have a backup kidney type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're really fortunate that we only need one and we can live yeah. healthy. But uh got to take care of it. And now that is always in the back of my mind. If I get prescribed something or even just want to do something, you know, like some new, something new, think of it, kind of think about that, whether I'm taking something or ingesting something. Yeah. But yeah, I've had a couple of scares where I thought, you know, I had a pain and I thought it was my kidney, but it turned out not to be. Mm. But yeah, it's definitely a little motivating. It'll get you thinking about yeah, thinking about your health and yeah, you're just it's just such an inspiration. Just from you know the the time you were born to everything you've been through in life, it's. Mm. Anyways, I can go on, but <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. You do you eat healthy, like me. That was a, another top question. Like, mm -hmm. oh, does your boyfriend eat like I do, or like does he, you know, have yeah. Taco Bell? <laughs> no Taco Bell. We do uh, eat pretty similarly. You eat healthier than I do for the most part, but yeah, we eat pretty similar. I have a few things that I eat regularly that you don't, like uh, like butter, mm. some some things that high fat stuff like that, and uh, 
But I have I have ghee. Yeah, you do. You have alternative stuff, and I enjoy those too. But um, but I still I'll just yeah yeah still enjoy some buttery biscuits or something. I feel like you eat actually pretty healthy. I could say the opposite. I feel like sometimes you eat healthier than I do <laughs> on some things. I think you you eat a lot less. I don't want to say like less processed food, but but sometimes I'll eat a lot of like different protein powders that I know is good for me and like things like that, which I think that's great. And I think you just, you just, you'll just eat like a full on steak. Yeah. I'll just (laughs) eat some, yeah, less, that's definitely less processed, although processed sounds kind of funny when you're talking about that stuff, but yeah, just pretty wholesome, single ingredient stuff is satisfying most of the time. Yeah. I I like it. I like your concoctions a lot of your stuff is one or two or three ingredients so that that's right up my alley yeah so like what if if I um what if I wasn't into health would you still date me if you weren't where you're at I would I would I would know I would just see where you were but you're as long as you were trying and we're all on a journey here I would I'd probably recognize that but but no I definitely appreciate where you are you bring a lot to the table and uh yeah I learned a lot from you I enjoy it it's good. Definitely enjoy eating all your creations. Mm, I enjoy making them. Yeah, I'll continue <laughs> you know, to give you honest opinions. You do give honest opinions, yes, and you're no, you don't shy away from my simple meal stash either. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was ac- actually one of the things that was like a turn on for me? I know it's like I know I've told you this before, but like on our first date, um, we would we went. Um, Like we were shopping at like Target or something and we had bought something and um, someone like handed you the receipt and you're like, no, no, I don't don't want the receipt. And you're like, yeah, it has like, it's full of chemicals and it's full of, what did you say, BPA? Um, Yeah, it's BPA. It has a lot of BPAs in it. Yeah, BPAs. A thousand times more than any water, water bottle or. Yeah, more than any water bottle and like. I was like actually really impressed because I knew like receipts aren't good for you, but like knowing that you knew that, I was like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Like, like my little sister, she's on point with this oh, stuff too. Yeah, little sister, yeah, Allison's great. Yeah, learn a lot from her as well. Yeah, yeah, your whole family is amazing, and it's just like, ah, uh, I could go on about like how perfect God set us up, but um, but yeah, so that was like, oh. Really, this guy—he's all about receipts, huh? So you know, <laughs> what's a what's a pet peeve that you see in today's society, um, like today's health society? Hmm. Yeah, it's probably just like the chemicals in food, and the chemistry, how everything has become like a like a lab researched chemical cocktail instead of just some uh, minimum ingredients and some wholesome food. And everything, fast food, uh, something to get the grocery store, to even just like milk. Yeah, yeah, like fast food in like the fifties is so much different. Yeah, it's so much less adulterated. Back when you could eat cheeseburgers and milkshakes and yeah, it was feel at, feel fine about it. It was at least made with like real food and like real fat, real meat. real sugar. Yeah, yeah, instead of like chemicals. Yeah, everything is so ambiguous about what it is. There's like. You know, the labeling laws have made it that way, the advertising with companies, and and it just makes it so difficult for the average person out there to sift through all of it to make some simple decisions for their family. Yeah, it's very misleading, for sure. So what's an everyday health practice that you do daily or any kind of supplement that you take daily that... Well, I wake up early. I like the morning. That's a pretty... Uh, daily routine for me, whether I'm working or not. I just like the morning, getting up early, whether I'm going to work or going fishing or surfing, enjoying my mornings. And uh, as far as supplements go, pretty minimalistic. I don't take a lot. I like magnesium because I do feel a difference in my muscles and it helps me rest. Um, ginger and turmeric, I do take those when I'm feeling like some carpal tunnel flare up or headaches or anything like that, just from like inflammation. And... uh now, is this like fresh ginger? Or no, I take like, like a, a little tincture oh, a under tincture. my tongue. Okay. Or I'll eat it fresh too. I do eat it in food and, and stuff, but yeah, put some tincture under my tongue if I need a good dose. But Where's yeah, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of supplements. Do you drink coffee? 
I used to. I love coffee. I love chocolate and coffee. Mm -hmm. But uh, caffeine is one of the things I cut back on, just having one kidney. So yeah. I'll have a little bit, a little sip here or there. It doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. But I love the smell. Do you love it? Yeah. Uh, anything I do that bothers you? Um, it doesn't bother me, but I, I think your pet peeves are kind of funny. It's like My uh, pet peeves are funny? Oh uh, Well, I mean, they're not... What it's not you? difficult to accommodate, but it's just, yeah. And and they make sense, but like the the groceries, I put groceries on top of the counter one time. Mm. And uh, I got it for that. Uh, yeah, that's a... What, when he says groceries on the counter, it means the grocery bag. Yeah, from the store. Like when COVID was happening and all this, we've been a lot more conscious of it. But yeah, I just came in and tossed them on the countertop and... I was like, what I was are you doing? Quickly educated. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's another one? Um, let's see. I've had some pretty bad bachelor habits like sitting on the counter and that's not a good idea here where she makes food, I found out. Mm. Um, I mean, okay. I'm I'm actually better with it now. Like I'll just clean up after like when he goes away out of the room. I'll just like Yeah, hey, I've gotten better at it too. No, but like sit where you prepare food. If is it like right? Like if someone's like, you don't know, where has your butt been? You know, like <laughs> It's sitting on a dirty park, fishing boat. Park bench, fishing boats, and then it sits on your counter. So I don't know, um, but I'm I'm trying to be better at it too. Like I'm I I can be OCD about a lot of things, so I recognize that. It's an old bachelor. You're gonna have to. You're not a bachelor anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Over sixteen thousand research studies on sodium lauryl sulfate have shown links to irritation of the skin and eyes, organ toxicity, developmental reproductive toxicity, neurotoxicity, endocrine disruption, and biochemical or cellular changes. This is one of the most common ingredients in laundry detergent. That is just one of many toxic ingredients found in almost all laundry detergents and cleaning soaps. What we wash our clothes and sheets with is just as important as what we put on our bodies and in it. And it plays a major factor in our internal and external health. It can affect our digestive system, hormones, immune system, and thinking, as well as skin issues. That's why switching to a truly non-toxic laundry detergent is so important. If you haven't heard of Truly Free Home, then listen up. Truly Free Home's non-toxic and eco-friendly laundry detergent is free from all thickeners, dyes, optical brighteners, synthetic fragrances, and other harmful chemicals. It's available in plant-based essential oil scents or entirely unscented. And every first order arrives with a forever jug that is BPA-free, and all future orders are refills, making less waste. Plus, you get free shipping. Truly Free Home is offering my listeners 300 free laundry loads and no subscription is required. Just click on the link in the show notes and get 300 free laundry loads and it will be automatically applied. So what attracted you to me then? I liked that you were, you were definitely into your craft. You were, um, you know, you're good at what you do and you're interested in it. And that, that came off strong right away. Um, you have, you know, a woman in good moral standing. You know, you uh, prioritize that, you know, having standards. And I could see that right away, too. That was really attractive. And, uh, yeah, it's just that was encouraging for me to want to spend more time with you. And the more time that we spent, I just found that mm. I just connected with you on a lot more levels. And, yeah, you turned out to be just what I was looking for. Well, I could say the same thing about you, but um, this is just like so, just like such a raw podcast and I'm I'm actually really loving it. Okay. So um, do you have a favorite food that I've made? Yeah. The shepherd's pie is probably my favorite dinner. I like that. Is it really? Bison or, or beef, either one. I like, I like those a lot. Um, that's on my, that's on my Instagram, by the way, shepherd's pie. Look it up. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Plug. Super hearty. Filling and healthy, it feels healthy too. Um, desserts, I like those Samoa cookies a lot. Those are probably one of my favorites, mm. right up there at the top. And then, oh, the mango avocado salsa. I could eat that every day. That's one of my all-time favorites. We had some for yeah. I could eat that for lunch night. every day. Yeah, real refreshing. So is it? It's okay. So for those that it's just mango, 
avocado. <laughs> Maybe cilantro. Or cilantro. Some citrus if you want. Cilantro, sea salt, and lemon. And sometimes I'll add like white rice to it, kind of make it like a little tropical. Maybe a few shrimp in there if you want to make it into a ceviche. Yeah, Mm. tomato. (laughs) We just keep adding ingredients. But it could just be mangoes and avocados and it's delicious like that. Yeah. So going back to kind of like health, like what is something that really helped you on your health journey? Studying plants, I went to school for plant science, studying plants and like just looking at like the biology of plants and animals and like their needs. That made me think about mine, Mm -hmm. just like people and health as well. And uh, yeah, just like the basics, like food and water, air, environment, things you can control that we put the most of in or around us every day. It's going to be our environment and air and then water is next and then food. And uh, those are all things that we can has some control over, especially if we look at animals and crops. You know, that's all we do is manipulate them with those things. So that is a big one. Well, uh, plant science is that's that's your major. That was my major in school. Plant science. So mm-hmm. this guy can really just like talk about plants. Not just, I mean, this could maybe be for like another episode. I can bring him back, but I mean, he could talk about growing food and like vegetables and fruit trees and like he knows all. I mean more than anyone I've ever met about plants. <laughs> and if you ever need <laughs> to start your own like food farm, this is the guy to go to. <laughs> so in studying plants too, and I think that it's really interesting when you do look at food and it comes, it kind of, I don't want to say comes full circle, but looking at certain foods that are good for your body and how they kind of resemble the bot, the certain body part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a term for that. I can't remember it right now, but it's like the signature of species of plants. Like the God left His fingerprints on how we should use those plants or what they're good for within them, and they resemble different parts of our bodies or yeah. organs. So what's so so? Let's name some. What are some? Grapes look like blood cells. Those are good for your blood. They're good for your lungs. Oh, okay. Um, carrots, you look at a carrot cross section, you can see the iris, the eye looks just like yeah. an eyeball. When you cut a carrot, it definitely looks like yeah. an eyeball. And those are good for your eyes. Um, but walnuts. Walnuts and brain, good for your brain. They definitely look like a like a brain if you open a walnut. Mm-hmm. Uh, kidney beans and kidneys, those are an easy one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll have to... Hit on this subject again sometime. We can really go into it a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, we can, we'll we'll go into it. But I mean, if you really think about it, it's it's really cool. And There's so many things. Yeah, ginger, reproductive organs. Oh yeah, and the papaya. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We if were that's talking like about that one today. <laughs> yeah, TMI, but like <laughs> you can look at a papaya that resembles something. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we'll we'll let you Google that one on your own. But, um, <laughs> It's just super fascinating. You know, I I think that um, you have a lot to to give, you know, and your story is just super inspirational, Rory. And I I think it just deserves to be told because just, I mean, we've just barely scratched the surface of everything you've had to go through and the testimony you are in, in God and how he's really just preserved your life and saved it. And, um, it's just, uh, you know, everyone has a story and I, I believe everyone should be able to have the opportunity to tell it. Yeah, it's our job to do that. Yeah. I'm pretty shy, but yeah, I definitely don't mind the opportunity and take advantage of it and yeah, give God the glory. Mm. I wouldn't be here. I said Amen. plenty of opportunities to have had other things happen and have the story be different, but yeah, here I am. Yeah, I mean, and and to just come at it with a really good attitude you know? I have a lot of blessings, and we found each other. We have a lot to look forward to. We do have a lot to look forward to. Mm-hmm. I think so. So, um, I think that'll conclude this episode. But uh, we'll, we'll have to go back and talk more about plants and growing, and uh, maybe I'll do like a Q and A and what what uh, questions you guys want. So that stay tuned for that, and we'll um, talk a little bit more about growing your own food and all that good stuff. So thanks so much, Rory, for coming on and being a good sport. Oh, yeah. I love you so much. Oh, I Anytime. love you too. <laughs> thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, 
please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a Resonant Media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Chris McComb. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.